Last section of chapter two. Woohoo, we're almost there. So now that we've dealt with inequalities a bit, and we can report their answers in multiple different ways, we want to work with some application problems. So things in the real world that will involve inequalities. And we want to be able to translate some sentence into an equation, um, an inequality equation. So you'll see some important words as we work through these problems. Some important words, some important phrases. And in that first example, you have some, a sample sentence of using that kind of standard phrase that you see when we're dealing with inequalities. So we want to translate that now into an inequality shorthand. So instead of using all those words to describe something, we want to use a short little inequality. So, is at least, Bill is at least 24 years old. So what are his options for his age? He could be 24, he could be 25, or anything larger than that. So Bill, I'm going to let his age be represented by B. His age has to be greater than or equal to 24, because he is at least 24 years old. What about is at most? At most, five students dropped this course. So what are my options? If I let that uh, variable be in, the number of students dropping the course, it has to be less than or equal to five, because at most, equal to five or less than that could also drop. Cannot exceed. To qualify, earnings cannot exceed $32,000. So if earnings are E, it has to be less than or equal to $32,000. I cannot exceed. I can't go any higher, but I could be equal to $32,000. What about must exceed? The speed must exceed 15 miles per hour. So I'm going to say S is my speed. It has to be greater than 15 is less than, Tucker weighs, Tucker's weight is less than 50 pounds. So T is less than 50. He's not equal to 50, he's less than 50 pounds. Is between, this one's a little bit different. So the film is between 90 minutes and 100 minutes long. So I have both an upper bound and a lower bound in this case, where before we were just bounding one end. So the film length is less than 100 minutes, but it's also greater than 90, so it has to be bound between those two. No more than, so Cooper weighs no more than 98 pounds. Cooper, if I let him be C, he's less than or equal to 98, because he weighs no more than 98, but he could weigh less than. No less than, Sophia scores no less than 8.3. So she has to get greater than or exactly equal to 8.3 for her score. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. Translating from an inequality is much like just if we were working with an equation. All right, so in that little box, translating at least and at most. A quantity x is at least some amount q. So if we want to represent that with a shorthand notation, what's it going to look like? x has to be greater than or equal to q, because x is at least some amount q. It could be equal to, or it could be greater than. What about x is at most? So it could be less than or equal to some quantity q. Okay. So take those few tries. Translate those following sentences into inequalities. Use whatever variables you want to represent each of the subjects. So, first one, Sarah worked no fewer than 15 hours last week. So, S, I'm going to let it be Sarah, has to be greater than or equal to 15. No fewer than 15. It could be bigger than that, could be exactly equal to 15. What did you get for B? Camilla's weight is less than 110 pounds. Less than 110. It's kind of straightforward when they actually tell us what symbol to use in words. That number is no more than minus 2. Oh, excuse me. That number is more than minus 2. That'll make a difference. Greater than minus 2. D. At most, 1,250 people attended this concert. So we have max capacity at that number. So my population, or the people attending, has to be less than or equal to 1250, because those are the number of seats that I have. I could not fill it up. I could fill it up to capacity. 
Last E, yesterday at least 23 people got tickets for speeding. So if T are my number of tickets, at least 23. So I could have exactly 23 or I could have more than that. So we want to look a little bigger now. If I'm dealing with real world problems, I need to be able to take some situation, write it as an inequality and solve. So the first one we're going to look at is the catering company. To, t to cater a company's annual lobster bake cookout, yum, Jayla's Catering charges $325 for a setup fee, plus $18.50 per person. She has a budget. The cost cannot exceed $3,200. How many people can attend the cookout? So as always in the beginning, what are we asked to be solved? We want to figure that out first. We want to figure out how many people can attend the cookout. So that's my unknown. I'm going to let n be number of people who can attend. And we need to write an inequality for this. So starting off, the first um, constant that they give us is 325. That's a setup fee. So that doesn't vary per person. That's just a flat flat rate. I have to pay her $325 just to set up everything. And in addition to that, she's charging $18.50 per person. So the number of people that show up times the number of plates, the cost per plate, and adding in that straight setup fee, that cannot exceed what? So it has to be less than or exactly equal to $3,200, okay, because the flat fee, and then the cost per person times the number of people, so the cost in total for everybody, has to be less than $3,200. So, let's solve. I'm solving for n. I treat the inequality just the same as if it was an equal sign, unless I'm multiplying or dividing by a negative. But let's just see if that happens anyway. I need to move 325 to the other side. If I do that, we are looking at 1850N is less than 2875. I'm dividing by a positive, so I don't need to flip any signs. N is less than or equal to 155.4. Okay. So we solved for the N value, but again, what is N? Number of people. So does it make sense to have 0.4 of a person if we're not like counting a pregnant lady or something? Okay, so no. So do we want to round up or do we want to round down to have a more logical answer? Because I can't exceed $3,200. N has to be less than or equal to this value. So we want to round down. So we want to round down to 155 people to not exceed that $3,200 budget. Okay. And if you weren't certain that this was correct, if maybe you rounded up instead to 156, you can always plug it back in to your original equation that you wrote. Make sure that it actually holds true that it's going to be less than or equal to $3,200. If you pick 156, it's going to be larger than and it's going to fail. So in that case, you would know, oh, I need to round down. Nice. So, next one is for you to try. Butter stays solid at Fahrenheit temperatures below 88 degrees. The formula, F equals blah, blah, blah is the conversion, is used to convert Celsius temperatures to Fahrenheit temperatures. Determine those Celsius temperatures for which butter stays solid. So I feel like the setup of this problem, the very first step, is probably the most difficult for students. So what is the first sentence giving us? Butter stays solid at Fahrenheit temperatures below 88 degrees. So my temperature of the butter, I'm just going to call it F because I'm dealing with Fahrenheit for now. So the Fahrenheit temperature of the butter has to be less than 88 degrees for it to st stay solid. And we're trying to determine the Celsius temperatures for which butter stays solid. So I have my inequality in terms of F. 
And then I have the conversion, F in terms of C. So we can substitute that in. I know F is equivalent to 9 fifths Celsius plus 32. That has to be less than 88. And I'm trying to solve for C. So go ahead from there, take that guy, solve for the Celsius temperatures that butter still stays solid at. So what did you have to do? Move the 32 over. So we're looking at 9 fifths C is less than or equal to 56. So we may subtract 32 from both sides. Now, I have a fraction on the front of C, and it's being multiplied. So instead of dividing by a fraction, I should be doing what? Multiplying by the reciprocal. What I do to one side, I have to do to the other. And it's positive, so I don't have to flip any signs and worry about that. These are going to cancel. We'll be left with C is less than, what, 280 over 9. But as a temperature value, fraction doesn't really make all that sense because we don't say, oh, it's Celsius 280 divided by 9. It's not very natural. So fraction-wise, mixed fraction, we're looking at 31 and a ninth. So around 31 degrees Celsius. Anything lower than that, butter will stay solid. And again, we want to sum it up with the sentence like we've done before. Let me grab a different marker. So butter stays solid. Butter stays solid at a temp of less than, since we're dealing with that symbol, 31 and 1 ninth degrees. There's a student next door playing piano. Hopefully you can't hear it. But if you can, hey, it could be serenaded. All right. Last two problems. One for us to do. The U.S. Department of Agriculture recommends that for a typical 2,000 calorie diet, no more than 20 grams of saturated fat be consumed. In the first three days of a four-day vacation, Ethan consumed 26 grams, 17 grams, and 22 grams of saturated fat. Determine how many grams of saturated fat Ethan can consume on the fourth day, excuse me, if he is to average no more than 20 grams of saturated fat per day. So what are we being asked to solve for? what he can eat on the fourth day, how many grams, so he is, is still underneath that average. So we're going to let x be the fourth day consumption. All right, so we're looking for an average. So how do we find the average of something? Some things. We add them all up. We divide by the number of things that we have. So on the first day, he ate 26 grams. Third, second day, 17. Third day, 22. What's he going to eat on the fourth day? It's unknown for right now, but I know that that average has to be what? No more than 20 grams. So he could eat exactly 20 grams on average per day, or he could eat less than that. So the inequality that we need is less than or equal to 20. So I'm trying to solve for x. What is the first thing that we need to take care of? We have to get rid of the 4, but I can simplify up here. I can add those together instead of having to write them a bunch of times. So we're adding these three numbers, we get 65. So the first three days together, he consumed 65 grams of fat. And now we want to take care of that 4. So I need to multiply both sides by 4 to dig out x from the fraction. We're looking at 65 plus x is less than or equal to 80. I need x on its own, so I need to subtract 65 from both sides. x is going to be less than or equal to 15. And again, x was the fourth day consumption. Four grams of fat, so my label's on there. We're going to put one on there. should be grams. And we always want to sum it up in a sentence. He can consume... How do we want to word it? So he could eat less than 15 grams or exactly 15 grams. So no more than 15. Then 15 grams 
on the fourth day. Okay. Last one is for you to try. A pre med student is taking a chemistry course in which four tests are given. To get an A, she must average at least 90 on the four tests. The student got scores of 91, 86, and 89 on the first three exams. Determine what scores, plural, on the last test will allow her to get an A. So again, first thing we always want to ask, what are they asking us to solve? We're determining what scores on the last test will allow her to get an A. So I need to let X be the last test score. All right, and we're finding an average. So the first, she got 91, second, 86, third, 89. The last one is unknown, but we're finding the average of those four. And she must average at least 90. So she could have it exactly equal to 90. Or what else? Anything bigger than that. If I get a 91, I'm still going to get an A. It's above the cutoff. So let's solve. Again, simplifying. I'm going to add my three numbers together. That'll give me x plus 266 divided by 4 greater than or equal to 90. I need to dig out x from inside of this fraction, so I need to multiply by 4. x plus 266 greater than or equal to 360. I need to subtract 266 from both sides to get x on its own, so we're looking at 94, greater than or equal to 94. So what does that mean? She gets a 95 on the last exam. She's definitely going to be above the 90 degree, 90 degree, 90 average. Anything higher than that, she gets 100. If she gets a 94 exactly, she'll still be getting an A. 93, not going to work. So she must score at least a 94 on the last exam. Nice. Good job. So we can do that setup easily. Then we're just solving as normal. But the only thing we have to remember with inequalities, if we multiply or divide by a negative, we need to flip the sign. Wearing black is my favorite because I just look like floating arms and a floating head.